Good morning and welcome to Live at the Legislature, where every week we tell you about the bills, issues, and events happening down at the state capitol. With us this week, we have Lisa Kitagawa, Representative Lisa Kitagawa, excuse me. She represents District 48, which is Kaneohe, Kahalu'u, and Waiahole, and she is Vice President of the, uh, Vice Chair of the Consumer Protection and, and Commerce Committee. Representative, thank you for joining us on this uh, rainy Tuesday morning. Thank you, James. Thank you for having me. Very good. Well, it's Education Week at the State Capitol, but this year, due to the coronavirus restrictions, there will not be the usual public presentations or the, of certificates and the recognition of our top educators. But lawmakers still want to recognize and honor students, teacher, and staff for their contributions to education in Hawaii. Representative, why is it important that the legislature recognize excellence in education in our public schools? Thanks for that question, James. It's really important that we um, recognize education in our public schools. I think, you know, teachers go into their profession not because it's something that they get lots of recognition for, they get lots of money, but they go into it because they really love their job and they love working with kids and they really feel a passion and a calling to be able to educate the next generation of leaders, especially here in Hawaii. So it's so important that we recognize them, we thank them, and we let them know that we appreciate them for all of the work. You know, being a teacher uh, is really something that I think is a sacrifice. My mom was a 30-year public education uh, teacher, and so I seen, you know, just how much work and effort and love she just put into her job every day, whether that's buying kids, you know, school supplies that they didn't have, spending weekends correcting work or helping with projects. And I think all of our teachers in Hawaii and in our public schools and private schools really do that. And so we just really want to take a small part of, you know, the legislative session to be able to say thank you and to really appreciate them for all of the, uh, the work that they do. So it's really important that we continue to do this, even though we're in a pandemic right now. Oh, I agree totally. We all have a teacher in our memory that, that did something special for us. But during this pandemic, force, schools have been forced to use distance learning. How do you think that has worked out? And are you and the families in your district ready to go back to school yet? Well, I think given the circumstances, distance education um, has worked out the best that it could. You know, both of my children, I have a third grader and a first grader, they're on um, right now blended learning. They started off with distance education, but now they're into blended learning. And I think it's worked out really well. They're doing really well. And the teachers have really um, done an excellent job adapting to this new way of teaching, whether it's both in person and on the computer. Um, but, you know, everyone is excited about getting back to school and getting the kids back into the classroom, whether that's from the elementary level all the way up into the high school level and even college. You know, we really want to get our kids and students back to the classroom because there's a uh, certain um, parts of the educational experience that you're missing out on when you're just behind the computer screen, especially the socialization factor. But I think we always want to remember that safety has to come first and that that's really important. And we don't want to um, backtrack on any of the progress we've made as far as our coronavirus numbers, but we just want to make sure that we um, move into all face-to-face um, -face learning in a safe manner and in a manner that's going to work for each school and each community because they're all very different. So that's something to just keep in mind. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Now, you grew up in Kaneohe and attended public schools. You graduated from UH Manoa, Manoa where you were a faculty member and you are now raising your own family. You've experienced education from all sides. And as you mentioned, your mother was a teacher, which I didn't know until this morning. Oh, what, what in your mind makes a good teacher and what direction should we, going, be, we be going with public education in our state? Well, I think there are a lot of qualities that make a great teacher, um, but I think some of the most important really are their heart for for impacting students, you know, it's that love that they give, it's the selflessness. And I think that, you know, it takes a real special person to be a teacher. And um, you can tell when you think back to your time in school, you know, there are a few teachers that really stand out. And I think why they stand out is because they made an impact on you personally. They touched your heart in a certain way that made you remember them. And I think that's really important. Of course, they 
work so hard. They think of innovative ways to educate our kids and they're always giving. And those are all important things about our teachers. And I think moving into the future, you know, education, especially public education, it has to always be student focused and student centered. And we always need to think about what is the most important thing for our kids. And that's how I think we should make policy and school should move forward. It's about what can we do to help our kids succeed and thrive and to be really ready for whatever the next step is after public education, whether that's college or going into the workforce. We want to make sure that our kids are prepared and our kids can be successful in life. And so I think that's something that we need to remember as we're making policy for the state, but also as we start moving back into the classroom that, you know, we always have the student's best interest in mind. Yeah, there's a lot of ways they can go after school, you know, college or trade schools or whatever they feel is best. That's good. Um, and you have eight public schools in your district, which is more than most districts, I believe. Um, with our tight budget this year and the ongoing needs of public schools across the state, what are the most important needs of schools in your district and what are the chances of them getting those improvements this year? Well, I think there's needs across the state as far as public education. You know, in my district, which is not um, different than other districts, you know, we always need capital improvement projects. So many of our schools are, are old. The infrastructure is failing. Things are falling apart. You know, um, kids really need access to uh, distance education materials, to computers, to the Internet. Um, teachers need the support in their classroom. Teacher pay is another important issue. So there's so many things I think that education needs. Um, this year is so hard because, of course, we're coming out of the pandemic. The budget is just um, not what it used to be in previous years. And so we're really trying to work with a limited amount of funding. Um, so I don't know what the possibility is going to be as far as being able to fund education because every sector of our state and our government um, and private sector are really hurting financially. Um, but I think looking to the future and to the long term, you know, we really need to start investing in education because the bottom line is that our kids are our future. You know, they're going to be our leaders. They're the next generation. They're the ones who are going to help us get through all the challenges that we need to face when you and I are retired and much older and, you know, and, and my kids and all of the kids that are in school now are going to be the ones leading our state. So it's really important that we invest in that um, and we make education a priority. And so I think in the long haul, um, you know, we're going to be able to do that as our budget recovers. But this year, it's really going to be a difficult decision. Yeah, I do miss the children all over during education week. Usually they're out in the, the mezzanine and, and kids are everywhere and it's so much fun to have them here. But but thank you for being on the show today and reminding us of, of why we have Education Week and, and the value of our schools and teachers. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Go, I'm gonna be late for work. It's Tuesday morning. I gotta record live at the legislature on Alelo. Senate and House leadership discussing what's happening at the state capitol? So just watch it on the news tonight. Come on, let's go. Hey, this is like getting the news before it's news. If only I could get this remote to work. There. Can we go now? No DVR? No problem. Watch Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. on Channel 49.